Four Nights of the Apocalypse chapter 116 is out in this. Now this was a chapter I have been waiting to see. Because not only do we get some great character interactions, we also get literally basically the big reveal of what exactly Percival is. And I have many, many, many questions. But I feel like this is going to be answered within the next few chapters. And we have a break next week, but I got a video planned for next week in place of the chapter. So look forward to that. But either way, this is a really good chapter and I cannot wait to get into it. Before we get into this chapter, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help and ensures you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel. And it encourages me to keep these videos up as long as I possibly can every single week to bring you guys some more Fortnite's goodness. Now with that out of the way, let's get right into the chapter. So chapter 116 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse titled The Boy of Destiny. We had a nice color page spread of just one side being the Four Knights and their friends in the forefront and the other side being Percival's powers in a amber-ish color symbolizing what we're probably going to see in this next upcoming chapter. So the chapter starts off the record from last week with the, the, with the group on top of the destroyed Albion. And they're saying that they're stuck in a place like this and that the outside's teeming with the behemoth's negative energy. But they realize that it looks like the ash is avoiding the air around them and they're wondering what's going on. Chion tries to prop up Tristan saying it's because of Tristan naturally. But Tristan says that even with the Goddess Clan's healing force, it's hard to fend off this strong a power. And so Tristan comes up with the logical solution that the reason that they're here is because of Percival's magic protecting them. As we literally see like a bubble around the group with the miasma seemingly avoiding them or just hitting the top and not hitting them. Don is like, so all the ash is trying to avoid Percival and Tristan says this must be why Zeldris told them that they'd be safe around Percival. Tristan goes up and asks, what are you anyway? And Percival says, I don't really know myself. But Lancelot goes up and says, hey, I bet you know some, something about this, right, Jiggly Bull? Which he gave the stand nickname to, which I, we need a proper name for this guy. I'm just going to keep calling him a stand. The stand comes up and says, look, I'll tell you this before that. Let's t take out the dogs that have been sniffing around us. As we see that, that they're looking down on the Chaos Knights and they're right in the middle of this very strong miasma. As they realize that it wasn't the Albion warding off the miasma, but in fact, Percival, one of the four nights of the Apocalypse, it was him all along. And one of the knights is saying, are you sure he's the weaker member of this team? And kind of, yeah, he is still technically the weakest member of this team, but his natural life force seemingly is just keeping them safe from the miasma. And we see that this miasma is making them cough up immensely and saying that they're in a bad spot. The knight with the goddess clan powers tries to use saintly coat to heal them and keep them protected from the miasma. And Tristan realizes, why is someone a Chaos Knight casting a Goddess Clan spell? But the one casting the spell says that the negative energy is too much. No doubt about it, they're at the source of the miasma, as the Saintly Coat disappears and shatters, as they're once again engulfed by this immensely thick miasma. As they're all wondering if this is it for them, is their mission a failure, as some of them ask for King Arthur's forgiveness. Everybody's looking down on the Chaos Knights, as they're wondering, wait, did we just win this without even having to enter an actual fight, which obviously Donnie is questioning this also, but On just says, come on, don't do be such a wimp. We're holy knights. We shouldn't win from the, such a cowardly move. Let's go down there and fight them fair and square. But Shion says, look, save your chivalry for where it belongs in your dreams. S stating once again to always keep an eye out for the worst case scenario. As the soul bay actually agrees with Shion, stating that this is probably a more practical solution. And yeah, this is the more practical solution. They basically can get rid of their enemies in one fell swoop if they just let them suffocate to death from the sheer miasma, poisoning, and burning them up. But Nazgins goes up to say that either way, it's not their place to say anything. It's up to the three leaders, as we see Lance, Tristan, and Percival looking down at the Chaos Knights. Mutlich then says, fine, it's a wager, but it's all I got. He takes out a cube and then throws it down on the ground as he's, we see Gawain and the Six Knights of Black, I'm calling them the Six Knights of Black until we get an actual physical name for these guys, have all been defeated and captured. As this shocks the group, as they do see that Gawain was captured by the Knights. Now, I am a little bit disappointed that Gawain didn't escape, but at the same time, if this is a spell that she can't dissipate on her own, I'm alright with it to an extent, but we'll, we'll see what happens because she has a nice moment in this chapter. 
Percival qual calls out to Schwartz as he goes up and says that of all the things that happened, they had no idea that there was a goddess clan member mixed in with the humans. And this knight is a fearsome foe, better than a corporal up there with the archangels themselves. Again, I'm saying this is Nanashi, more or less this is Nanashi, and him being as strong as the archangels, that is something that I am very hyped about. And it makes sense how they were able to take out the Six Knights of Black if he was that strong. But Moldlich then picks up Gawain and holds her by, holds her from the back as he just shouts out, What are you going to do? Let Come down here and lose your valued companions and even these demons or help them out by also saving us. Gawain looks up at them and she's also coughing up blood and she shouts out to them not to listen to these guys. This is her fault for running off by herself and just tells them to stay there and watch her meet her maker. It was my mistake, and I'll make up for it. As, yeah, Moldage is like, you're really going to take us down with you, as all Gawain can do is just smirk. And she says, if you consider yourselves holy knights at all, then stop taking hostages and begging for mercy. Just die with your heads held high. Gawain goes on to say that Moldage misjudged her. To them, I am no more than a teammate to them. I'm not a friend, I'm not a teammate. I'm as good as a random stranger. And I just like this moment that Gawain is like, look, I fucked up. This is what I, I'm just going to make up for my mistake. Don't bother risking your lives for me. It's my fault for getting into this mess. Let me ta let me face this punishment on my own. It is a nice moment to, to see that she still kind of considers herself a stranger to them, which makes this next scene even more heartwarming, because Tristan, Lancelot, and Percival just dive right down towards Gawain and the knights, as even she's shocked by their decision. And Donnie is just, you know, kind of lamenting at the fact that I knew things would turn out this way, as they all just start to go down and be Percival in front of the Chaos Knights, as everybody lands with the Percival's life force protecting everybody from the miasma. As Moletch says that his bet paid off, and Gawain just calls them idiots, why did they pick the hard way for the sake of someone they barely even know? But Percival just actually says something pretty smart and obvious. None of them here in this group knew each other beforehand or from the start, well, save for like Tristan and Lancelot. And they've overcome hardships already, even though it wasn't a lot. I mean, they fought Revived Commandments, they faced off against Arthur for a brief time, they faced assassins, and now they're facing enemies again. And right now, they're all in this together. As Percival just says, you've been a part of our team this whole time. Tristan goes on to say, look, don't make me think I wasted my time convincing you to join us. And Lance just says, I promised you pudding back then, didn't I? As Gawain just smirks, saying, All of you are so gullible. Percival then calls out the Rosebank, saying, You too. I saved you once. I can't just leave you to die. And don't you have something to give back to me? Referring to the dragon handle. And as Rosebank calls out the Percival's name, and the other knights are like, Wait, he's the, he saved you? Is that true? As they're asking Rosebank to explain. But Molich just says, Look, Percival, the four knights of the apocalypse. For or not, you are a fine young man. And he commends him for that. But he says, look, we have a goal we cannot give up on. Things and people we need to protect. And to do that, we absolutely cannot let you go any further. No matter what kind of gutless act it is. As we see him silhouetted in shadow. But as Percival is facing down, he hears a weird voice again. As he's then in a black void, hearing the words, help me, help me, I'm scared. As Percival wonders where he is. Where Lancelot, Donnie, Nazi, and everyone else went. But Percival's spirit stand shows up and says, welcome to our world. He says that the owner of that voice is calling you. You were attracted here because that voice resonated with you. As the person's like, the owner of that voice, who's been talking to me this whole time? As his stand points out, the, the source is right over there. This big glowing blob in the middle of this pitch black world. As the stand says, it's scared of what's happening to the demon world. This is the creature behind what's called the behemoth. As this, as Percival is from the realization that this is basically the behemoth, essentially, like, primarily its spirit. As the stand goes on to say, yes, and it's our own brother as well. I don't get it. Percival doesn't get it either. As Percival's wondering if they're actually related to that blob thing. But as stand goes on to say, listen to me. Originally, none of us had any set shape or individuality. We were tasked with bringing glory to all worlds, but also death. So apparently, like there was like some fan that translation said life, but glory that also works too. As Percival's like, what? But what are you? And what am I even? As part we get the reveal that Percival and the Blob and the Spirit, they are life spirits, and that ends the chapter. What is a life spirit? I have no idea. But based off of this singular thing, it's very possible that Percival is basically an embodiment of like a being 
tasked with bringing uh, protection of life and death equally amongst all worlds. Meaning that there are other realities, well, maybe other dimensions, and this thing had no set individuality, but something had it split off. Possibly chaos did so or something, maybe. If it has perfect might be related to chaos. There's a whole lot to think about with this chapter, and I feel like we'll get more deep dive into it, or at least more clues on it, as we move on with this section of the story. But we do have a break next week, so maybe within the next two, three weeks, we'll get more explanations. But either way, we finally got at least an idea of what Percival is, a life spirit. So whether what, what that is, I have no idea, but possibly something that has to govern like life and death equally, potentially, or for something. And that does this blob that he's meeting is the behemoth and they're related somehow. They can hear each other's voices and Percival perhaps being there can help subdue the behemoth, its spirit, and stop the miasma since they are related in some way, shape, or capacity. Which is, I want to, I, I need more information because it's not enough for me to make like a full on deep dive on it. And I just really need a full on explanation of what exactly a life spirit is. But since Percival's not at death, he has this dark form. There's a lot to think about, but based on his abilities, the idea that he's a spirit of life and judges it equally, it makes a bit of sense from what we've seen with Percival's abilities so far and what ties his abilities together. Aside from that, I just like that the, the four knights, despite not knowing each other completely, would still risk their lives for Gawain. It's a shonen trope and cliche, it happens with almost every series, but it gets me every single time and I just love that they're slowly all becoming really good friends over the course of this journey and I feel like this is really going to be, after this arc, Gawain will fully open up and we might actually get to learn more about Gawain's past, her troubles, and she'll share it with the group as they are risking their lives to save her. And. Honestly, anything with Gawain, I'm all here for, and I can't wait because I want them to free her and the four of them to actually fight as a literal team all at once. Obviously with Lancelot coming up with combos and stuff like that, since he is the brains of this group. Either way, I'm excited for the next chapter in two weeks, so I look forward to everything. I'm planning to do some uh, videos when I come back, so we'll see what I come up with. I also have a review of Grudge of Edinburgh already done and recorded. By the time this uh, chapter com review comes out, it'll either be before I get this out or right after. So we'll see what that happens. All you need to know is I did enjoy the movie and I have some comments on it as well. But what did you guys think? How, what, how do you feel about the reveal of Percival being a life spirit? How do you feel about Gawain's interactions with the group here? Let me know in the thoughts, opinions in the comments section down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really does help and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel. And with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you all have an awesome day.